Hello and welcome to my video tutorial series RPG in a Box. I am Carsten and in this episode we're going to create a modular design of building parts for our new house. So we will start by creating a new rock of stone and then sculpturing the walls as an endless texture out of this block to build our building parts and then we are going to create a new door openable and closable with full animation to complete our house. After that, we will discuss how to set up uh, hiding and showing different layers of our levels in the house, dependent on which layer we are at the moment. So let's start. The first thing we need is a new type of stone block. So we already have a stone, but it's very dark and we want to use it not so often. So let's rename it to block of stone 2. So the name is free again and we create a new resource and call it block of stone. And we use textures a grid size of 16 times 16 times 16 voxel for a default tile of course and press the OK button. And our field should be impassable because it's a block. Now we need a new color for our stone block. So let's choose our custom color scheme and add a new color and we use we are using the hex code d3d2d1 which is which is a bright stone color so we have it in the palette yet and we can copy it and use the noise generator we will add this there and we will generate a nice noise for our stone texture without stripes so that's pretty good then we will copy the layers again to build up our new block like in the previous episodes So we are ready. We want to create an endless texture to create all other wall parts from this block in the future. So let's cut it from the stone. We want to have horizontal lines to separate the layers of stone from each other. So we choose a stone size of three voxels. And the first row is a little bit cut, but perfectly matches with the top line, like this. So we can stack it endless on top and we get a similar shape. So in the next step, we want to separate our stones horizontal. Therefore, we need a design to create a shape with not too small or too big stones. So I prefer, or I try to create a shape for stones, which is at a minimum of two voxels wide and a maximum of seven voxels. So if attached, if we attach one block to each other, that should match in a row like this. And now we have to put that design on each side of our cube.
So we got it. So now we define a new color. Six, seven, six, five, six, five. And that should be the color for our stone joints in the horizontal and vertical lines. Where I normally the motor is. So we can paint it this way for the complete layer. And now we have to color the vertical lines. Oh, let's try it out in the game in the next step. So we open the map editor and then we use our stone block and raise the set layer by one. So we don't erase the grass tiles at the ground. And now we can attach them to each other and we put another row on top and we save the map and want to start a game now. So let's press click play. And now we see our texture in game and it looks pretty good. So let's check it from the first person view. So we have a better view at the details. It's okay. And I think it's pretty good. Free move would be better at this point. Okay, but it's good for now. The next thing is to shape the corner for our wall because it's the biggest object at all. So we want to copy that resource and give it a new name. So it's a wall, of course of stone and it's the corner and it's the inner or outer corner. Let's call it outer corner. Maybe I change it in the future. So, okay. And I want a wall width of four voxels like this. So we erase all other voxels and that will be our co wall corner. So we have to cut the joints again. Oh, that's not right. And we also have to copy the vertical lines, and that's a little bit difficult. So four, three, four, four, three, four, it's okay. Two, and enough, and four, that should be here, and four, two, it should be there and then four seven what four seven no two seven so it should be there and now let's check it out yes looks pretty good i think so and this wall also two, four, three, two, four, three, four, 
And that's it. Two, five, two, two, five, two, and five. And that's it. And now we can save the model. And additionally, we can check it by erasing the object line by line. So now that's not the right perspective to do this. So like this, and we see we forgot some joints. This one, this one, and this one, obviously. What did I? So, okay, this and this looks pretty good. This and this too. Yeah. This one. We made it. Okay. Done. Now we want to color the mortar joints. So. So we colored it yet. We just need the vertical joints. And then we have to close these. To avoid ugly gaps while attaching the walls to each other. Okay, let's close the gaps like this and this and this and this and this. And to connect the walls to each other, we have also to close this joints. And that's it. So we look from the front. No, that's not what I want. I look from the front and I want to rotate it to the right corner. So that's pretty good. Okay, let's save that. Now we want to create the straight wall from that. So let's call it wall stone straight. Okay. And we do the erasing stuff again, the deletion stuff again. Oops. Hopefully my English is going to be better from episode to episode. <laughs> so like this, I think looks pretty good. Okay, accomplished. And the last thing we need is an um, in our corner. And that's pretty simple. So let's delete all boxes except the four in the corner. Then we close the gaps like this. The color isn't perfect. We could do it from the block again. So we have perfect coloring. But I think it wouldn't be recognized by any player. And we don't want to stretch the video too much. Okay, that's it. No, 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 stop. Copy. We destroyed our model. So let's undo it. to this and save this and let's create a new resource called a uh, wall stone corner and that's inner.
and it's passable. So that's it. Okay, now we have to adjust the passability. The block, of course, is impassable. That's right. But this field should be passable because we can go along the wall like this. Don't forget to save. And this. OK. That's it. And now let's create the building on our map. So the first thing we do is erase this block and correct the navigation paths like this. And then we will add our model to the map. So let me say first, the map we're going to build is not equal to the German tutorial I did previously. So I make the German episodes first and then I will redo it in English as well for you English people. And we will change the map in the next episode to match the German state. I put all resources in the video description so can you can uh, download it from my Google Drive. So let's start. Okay, we take the wall and we want to create the corners of our house first. So let's now that's we have to raise the set level by one and additional we should delete all marks to avoid lines which goes over the walls so we can walk over the house if we let them be. So let's build it like this. We can add the inner corner at this as well. And now we need a straight line. As a hind, you can copy each tile by holding the alternate key. So you can copy this tile for editing, editing purpose, and you can copy the high as well with the control key. You also can lock the Z level to avoid uh, changing it while editing. Um, additionally, you can hold the shift key and use the mouse wheel to raise and lower the Z level per one or the control key to raise and lower it by 16. So let's go back to layer one and we correct the navigation paths as well. And that's it. So let's build the next layer on top of it. We will use the building tool and we copy the height and the corner as well and put the new layer on top of the old one, the existing one. Uh, to avoid this, we can use another setup. We can disable the auto connection for navigation. Short key is U. And that is much better because we don't have to delete all navigation paths after editing. So that's it, let's save. I want to explain you the concept of navigation paths. So for the engine, it's not important how your model looks like. So there is no collision detection at all. Just the navigation paths describes how the character could behave. So in the previous episodes, in the last version of RPG in the box, it was possible to draw a navigation line like this and we can could go over this field as well. I think it's fixed now. We, can, we will try it. And additionally, we can make our river passable by doing this as well. So we can try it out by testing it in the game. So if it's impossible to go this way, we add a way out of our house. So we don't have to start twice. 
So let's save and check if we are in the first person. So that's okay. And set the experimental feature to on so we have more freedom for working on our level. Okay, let's go. We are in the house and it looks pretty good, I think. And are we able? No, we, are, we aren't. Yeah. It's really interesting. No, it's not fixed. I'm able to stand up on top of the wall and that that was what which I would show you. So the collision detection isn't there at all. There is no such thing. Uh, just the navigation path describes the behavior and the navigation path is normally on top of the highest voxel. So you go along your model shape. You can override it, but I will explain it in a later episode. So that's good for now. Let's build the game. Now we want to build our door. Previously, we need a door lintel, I know, I think. I think lintel is the word for it. So let's copy that and we call it um, wall of stone stone and we call it also lintel. And we delete all voxels below the sixth layer like this and we will save it now. So we have a high of eight, nine, ten voxels. Added by the 16, we have 26 voxels. Our character is 24 voxels high. Plant 24 high. Rex is a little bit uh, smaller. And we have additional two voxels for our door frame. So in the next step, we want to create our door. To build a wood shape with not just a single color, we want to use the noise generator. So we define our colors first. The panel should be 8E7A45. And the frame should be 462B. To be. That's our colors. And now we will create a new resource and call it uh, with a height of 26, and we call it um, door mood. Okay. And it should be passable. Now we want to create the door panel so we can. Use the noise generator just to create a single layer of noise. But we can use a hack. We can increase the width or the depth. And then we can create our noise by adding the color to the noise generator and create the first layer. So we look for a wood like shape. No, I think this is okay. And then we want to increase the layers by up to four, as usual, with a technique as usual. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And that's it. And now we want to change the rotation to bring it up like a door frame. So that's it. Now we can move it back to the center, but it is um, performance inefficient, you see. Uh, so maybe we uh, shouldn't do that without saving our model first.
we can decrease the consumption of resources by changing the width of the model to our 16. Oh no, that's not the width. Why it is. It shouldn't be the case. It shouldn't be quadrat quadratic quadratic. No, it's broken. So as usual, I had a few problems, but now I have an example to show it just in the developer of RPG in a box and maybe he can fix it with that. So let's go on we want to create the frame of our door by coloring a frame like this okay and then we cut our door panel out of the shape by erasing the first layer and then we want a horizontal wood lock and also at this position and I want to leave a wood lock at the bottom as well so let's move on and we have a diagonal wood lock as well for stabilizing the door and it comes up from the angle to the outside of the door so the door angle must be at this side angle hinge i think hinge it hinge is the english word the false friend, I think. Okay, like this. No, no way. That's wrong. This was wrong. Okay, so let's use this instead. Yeah, we got it. There's a little mistake. And now it should be perfect. Yeah, it matches perfect in the corner. Okay. We made it. Save it. And now we will do that from the other side too. So let's erase the upper two and the lower three layers and then let's build a diagonal diagonal Okay, ready. Now we want to add a door handle as well at this position. And at. Oh, that's a bad mistake. As I said before, The diagonal, oh, has the wrong direction. So we have to correct it now.
like this. And now we want to add the door handle at this position and also add the inner side like this. Okay. And now it becomes difficult. So we copy the first frame and then we want to move our model step, no, not like this. We want to move our model step by step so that the door is opening slightly. So we move frame by frame one voxel to the inside. like this. So we should reduce the width a little bit because diagonal is longer than the straight. Oops. In this kind positioning. So it's Not correct, but the user won't see it. So it's okay for this frame. Save it. For the next frame, we duplicate this and then we erase every third line of the door panel. Like this. If we don't do this, our door will look really unnatural while opening. So this is okay. As I said, the user won't recognize this. And we move it and then stripe by stripe I have a good news for you we just have to do this once. If we accomplish this, we can use tools to adjust the other frames. No. Oh no. Okay. Up to now, I found no way to unselect a voxel. Shift doesn't work, control doesn't work. If you know how I can handle to unselect a single voxel, please write it down to the commands. So, we did it. So now, let's select the frame 2 and just the panel of the door and copy that. Go to frame 3 and create an empty new one. So we use this and then we use the, oh, we should accept it and then we use the flip tool and we rotate it and now we can use this as our new frame so we don't have to rearrange it oh we have missed it 
door adjustment. So let's um, turn this. Why it won't rotate? I don't get it. Is it a bug? Or is it a feature? Yeah, now it works. And we missed the pixel, the voxel. So, that's it. I prefer to look from the front at the door, so the back of the door is inside the house. So, like this. And then we can adjust the frame by copy it. Paste it. around the panel like this so and the last frame we need we can also copy from the first frame where the door is closed so let's copy the panel Copy it, go to the last frame, add a new one, paste it, rotate it, not in this direction, like this. And then we will accept and we mirror it too. So let's check. We look from the front, it's okay. And we can now add the frame to this position too. that's it so I see our door can be better aligned so let's move the door one step into the house so we come out of the frame a little bit more by one voxel like this that's okay and let's do that for all other frames too and let's erase these edges they are really ugly and we don't need them and additional we have to adjust the door handle a little bit so we have set that to the diagonal and erase the old voxels so that's the next frame this frame should also be a little bit more the inside like no you have to look from the top so that's pretty good and the last keyframe should also be a little bit more inside the house and then we made it we have the prerequisites for our door animation. So let's add the last voxels. Like this. And then let's check the animation. So that's the first frame. And we have the second, third, fourth, fifth. We got it. We have to add the animation. So let's press the add animation button and let's call the first animation open. And 
it's from start frame one to five and we have to use clamp so that the door stays open in the last frame and additionally we have to add another one close from frame five to frame one also clamp so that the state the door stays closed in the last frame which is the first frame and now we can try how the door opens and that looks pretty good and let's try the closing too and it's really good so let's save them now we want include this door into our map so let's go to the map editor and we erase that tile in front of the door uh, in front of the bridge so we want to add our new door now and we make a bit mis a, 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 we made a mistake the door cannot be a tile because you cannot interact with tiles you can handle scripts like uh, entering or leaving a tile or something else but you cannot interact with a tile so my fault but it's interesting for you uh, if you want to interact with anything it should be an object but it's not complicated so we can use a new resource of type object and we call it door wood as well and then we can copy the frame simply in the object and we fix the mistake so this one as well and the last keyframe too but that's okay and now we have to do the configuration again open from one to five with clamp okay and another close animation from five to one as well. And that's okay. And let's try it out. That's okay. Open. Also okay. And let's add this to the map. Sorry, guys. So now we can use our object door and set it on the map. So it's by default, one layer above the ground. So the tile is at layer zero and it will set at layer one. So we can check it with the select tool and we see it's at layer zero. So then we want to close the wall with our lintel and the gap in the wall as well. And then we have to choose, we have to correct the interaction paths because we have disabled the auto connection mode and then we need an interaction line otherwise we are not able to interact with the door but this is normally complicated oh it works first time okay and now we have a door with an interaction line but we cannot interact with the door so I will show it to you because the door isn't handled by any script. So you have a door and you have a door animation, but nothing happens. To change this, we have to mark the door as a door object for the engine. So we select the tile in front of and in the back of the door and the door itself. And then we can use the right mouse button click to open the context menu and here we have create door and the create door button adds a script to the door and we can see it in the map properties map properties map properties no what kind oh yeah the entity properties so we see there is a script and the script has a lot of magical code i will explain in a later episode and it handles the animation types open and close and a state so that's it 
And now we are able to use this door so we can save it and jump in the game again. And then we can interact with the door and we can go through the door and we can also go this way. So I made a script to change it. It's called Xanchi's magic door script. May it be a lot too much in the name, but it handles this way very well. And uh, you can download it for free and use it and distribute it and uh, add more functionalities. So I was one thing I want to show you. If you use the debug menu, so you can type nav on and you'll see the navigation debug mode. So now we see that is a walk in interaction node. And if we close the door, it will change to an interaction node. And if we open the door again, it is a walk in interaction node again. So this door handles, uh, the script handles the state of the door, the animation path, and the connection of these two tiles. So let's go to the next step. So we also can use a tooltip to give the player a hint what we expecting. So we can say, uh, click me and I will, will open. So you can use this for any object in the map and this will be visible to the player. So if we go to the game, we see the tooltip by hiding over this object. So you can interact with your player and give him hints how to interact with your scenario. That's about tooltips for now. The last thing for this episode is hiding layers. So uh, let's do a quick step. I don't want to design uh, the roof in this episode. I will do it in the next one. And we put a layer of sand on top of the house. And that's, let's say that's our roof for now, okay? So we can now play the game and go can go into the house, but then we won't see our character. So we just see the roof, but we cannot look in the house, except we can zoom in the house, but it feels um, wrong. So we want to hide that roof without scripting it ourselves. So we can use a implemented feature for that. So we can use um, grouping of layers. So let's say we group this one, and that is our roof. So this one we want to hide. So we go to the properties, select them, and then again, we can use a group. Why can I? Ah, with right mouse button, sorry. And we can add it to the group. And let's say we have inside the house a layer, a level one. So Every single tile in the floor is a layer level one field. And if we go onto a field which is level one, that should hide specific tiles in our map so we can see the character. By doing this, we simply add to the hiding layer the same name, uh, level one, and add minus height. That's it. We don't have to do anything else. So, and now we can use the group to hide this as well for our interaction with the map. And it's easier to configure the inside of the house. So now we will select these tiles as well. And then we add this to the group level one. And level one is the defined area which hides the level one height group. It's pretty simple, right? Isn't it? So let's make a last try. I think the roof is hidden yet as well, but not because of our configuration, no, because our settings in the map 
So we preset our map to hide this as a standard behavior. So we want we want to do that. We show it again, and now we have the behavior we desired. We are in the house without the roof. We go out, and we have the roof. So that's pretty nice, I guess. So as usual, if you enjoyed it so far. Give me thumbs up, stay tuned, and I would be very excited about your subscription. See you in the next episodes. Bye!